Hello, I'm James Ingram for AutoControls.org. Uh, in this video, we'll do a demonstration of a DC automatic shuttle push-pull point-to-point system. These systems have been around for years. A lot of people are familiar with them, but some new people may find this of interest, hopefully. These things are sometimes called a push-pull operation because the, the train pulls the cars one way and pushes them back the other way. Uh, sometimes called a automatic reversing shuttle because it goes back and forth or sometimes point-to-point -point railroad because it's running on a single track just point-to-point. -point. Now we'll start this unit up and let it operate for a minute. Now the train went the other end of the track, it went across the diode section. Now the timer changed, it's going back the other direction. Now we're coming into the stop section, now it'll sit there as long as the timer, until the timer flips polarity. This gives you a very simple point-to-point -point operation. There's only two wires to connect to the track. The diodes on each end don't need any wiring. Now I'm going to adjust the timing to make it sit a little bit longer on the ends. Now that train should sit there a while longer before it starts up. I think that timer is adjustable to a maximum of something like two minutes or so, quite a long, uh, quite a long delay time if you desire. Now you can see it's sitting there for a longer time than before, before it starts up again. Again, we're sitting there for a longer time before we start to train up again. Probably a delay of about 15 seconds in this situation. Now we've uh, taken the S-gauge engine off the track and added the large-scale train, so we'll start that train up. This operates just about the same way as the S-gauge train did, as you'd expect, since they both have DC motors. It stops at the end of the large-scale track when it encounters the diode section. Now the timer reversed the polarity and it's backing up. The only thing with these di using these diodes at the end, the one consideration is if you add, like, add more cars to that train, You'd have to reposition the diode or else add more track on the end. But you can see we get basically the same back and forth operation with the large scale train as we have with the S gauge train. And again, if we want more time delay at the ends, we just adjust the uh, setting on the timer on the blue control unit. I made a statement earlier that it didn't matter how you oriented that diode track. Uh, you could turn it around either way and the, the, it doesn't affect the direction of the trains. I'm going to attempt to demonstrate that now by actually flipping the track around while the train is operating. Now the 
gap is in the right rail, I'm going to turn it 180 degrees so the gap is now in the left rail and put it back in the track. You can see the train stops and operates just as it did before. So it doesn't matter which side of the track that uh, gap is in or which way you turn that track. Now we've bought, got both the uh, S-gauge train and the large-scale train on the track. Uh, they're both hooked up to the same, uh, same control unit. We'll turn them on and both of them will go together. It doesn't really matter if one of them gets there first, they'll both get there eventually as long as the timer is set long enough to keep the polarity in one direction. You can see the, uh, the large scale trains are tending to arrive at the end of its track a little earlier than the S gauge train, but as long as the timer doesn't flip the polarity too soon, it'll just wait till the S gauge train gets there. Now they're both running the same direction. What I'm going to try to do while they're operating is flip the uh, wires around on the S-gauge train so it should run opposite to the large-scale train. Okay, I've reversed the wires going to the uh, S gauge track. I could have reversed either one, but it's now got them at opposite ends. You can see they're instead of running the same direction, they're they're running in the opposite direction of each other. And you could you could actually run more than just two as long as you didn't overload the controller. I think this I'm not sure it's not marked on. I think this controller is good for around two amps or so. I'm 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 sure some of the modern ones have higher amperage ratings than this one does, so you could conceivably run even more trains. One possibility you might be able to do if you had two tracks with the same gauge is cross them over near the ends. Uh, if you operate these trains like we just saw them in the video, the uh, controller will keep them on opposite ends. So the train on the red line would be down here, and the train on the black line would be down here. So as, as this one started up, it would cross here and go through here, and this one started up, it would cross here and go down this way, and they probably wouldn't collide. You wouldn't want to put a crossing in the middle because they're going to tend to be in the middle at the same time. But if you put a crossing out near the end, you'd probably be safe doing that. Not that you want to do it, just a, a possibility. Here's the wiring diagram for this uh, system. We've got our DC uh, transformer here going to our reversing shuttle controller. And again, let me emphasize this video showing an old, uh, somewhere mid-1980s PH Hobbies unit, but just consider this a generic unit that uh, reverses the track polarity on a time delay and there's several models made today that do essentially the same thing. Uh, anyways going from our controller out to our track 
and notice this is a very fairly simple diagram. You just have two wires from the transformer to the controller, two more wires out to the, from the controller out to the track. Very simple, just two wires to the track, and that's it. And then on the uh, the end, you had our diode sections, which I'll show in more detail later. And this uh, this diagram is for large scale. Uh, and as shown, if the left rail is positive, the train will go this way because for large scale, uh, the left rail is positive in the direction of travel. So if this rail is plus, this engine will move out in this direction. If you turn this engine around so it faces the other direction, it doesn't make any difference. It'll still go this direction. Uh, and I believe these diodes are shown correctly with the band on the uh, inside in each case. And as I'll show later, if you flip these diode tracks around, it doesn't matter. It functions the same way, but you've got to get the diode direction correct or it won't work. And probably the best way to do this is just check it before you hook it up. Uh, just do some alligator clips or something, temporarily connect your diode, make sure it's in the the right direction. If it's in the tr correct direction, the train will stop when it gets to the end. If it's in the if the diode's in the wrong direction, the train will continue right off the end of the track. Now, as I mentioned, this diagram is for large scale. If we look at the same thing for the smaller uh, two rail scales, o, o gauge, S gauge, H O, and N scale, uh, if this rail, the same rail is plus, now the train will go the other direction for the because for the uh, small scales, the right rail is the positive rail. Uh, so the train will go this direction. It's basically the same hookup, two wires out to the track, and, and that hookup's got to be somewhere in between the diodes. It doesn't matter where, as long as it's inside of these, inside of the two diodes at the end. And the only direction is you've got to, difference is you've got to change the direction of the diodes for the uh, smaller scales because the, the engines are wired opposite. The band has got to be facing the outside as it's shown here. The key elements to this is there's a uh, diode track at each end of the the point-to-point -point system. You notice this S gauge training sitting here. Uh, the one end is to the left of the uh, yellow gondola, the orange gondola, and the other end is kind of hidden behind that brown gondola. But there's a diode track right where the engine's sitting, and on the other end of the loop, there's also a diode track. Now, when I say diode track, actually, I mean a, a one of the rails has been cut and a diode has been put across the gap and what this does is it allows current to go one direction but not the other direction so when the diodes are arranged properly the train will back into the stopping area like where it is now it won't be able to go any further because the uh, diode won't let the current take it any further that when the uh, the uh, reversing circuit changes the polarity on the track then the train will be able to pull out and go down the track that little blue box uh, you see kind of in the right side of the picture, that's the that's the uh, control for the thing. And all it does is take DC current and reverses the polarity every 8 or 10 seconds, depending on how you have the timer set. There's an adjustable timer on the unit. So it's a very simple circuit for DC trains. It'll work on any DC train, should work on any DC train of any gauge, N gauge, HO gauge, S gauge is shown here, or large scale, as long as it's a DC motor. It won't work for uh, AC units, and it won't work reliably for DCC units. It will, it will work for some DCC units running on uh, DC power, but the direction's not always uh, reliable. Let's take a closer look at these uh, diode tracks on each end of the layout. I'm looking at more or less the center. I'm going to go around to the, uh, I guess you call it the left end of the layout, uh, zooming in on the uh, large scale one. There's a gap. It doesn't show real obviously, but there's a uh, there's a diode across that track. That, that's actually got two gaps, but we're just using the gap on one side. You can kind of see the diode is out right about here. It's a little it's a little clearer on the S gauge track. Let's go over there. There's a diode section on the S gauge track. Looking, looking at it, uh, you can see there's been a maybe see there's been a gap cut in the left rail, 
and there's a diode across the left rail. Now let's go around the other side of the, we'll zoom back out, go around the other side of the layout and look at the diodes on the other end which are a little closer to the camera. So traveling around the uh, layout the same direction the train was going, we'll come back here. And again let's zoom in on the uh, S gauge diode. You can see there's been a gap cut across the track, diode put across the gap. And the diode has to go the proper orientation. If you get the diode backward, the train wants to run right up off the end. That's stopping the current in the wrong direction. Uh, basically, you can think of a diode as like a, a turnstile for electrons. If you think of a turnstile like you saw see in a subway, only lets people go one direction. Likewise, a diode only lets current go one direction. So if the diode's in the wrong direction, it'll not work properly, your train will just run off the end of the track. Now you can turn the track around, it doesn't matter which way the track is oriented, but the diode's got to be in the proper position. Now note here the little gray band is on the uh, end of the diode that's toward us. Let's go over to the large scale track and take a look at that diode if I can find it. There we are. You can see on this one, maybe you can see, again, the gaps on the same side, on the right side as it was on the S gauge, but you can see the gray band on the diodes away from the camera on the far end. Now it's actually reversed, and that's because uh, on uh, large scale, the uh, left rail is positive in the direction of travel. It's, it's different than all the other gauges. The smaller gauges from uh, NHOS to rail O uh, gauge the... Uh, the right rail is a positive rail in the direction of travel, but large scale, the left rail is a positive rail in the direction of travel, so that's why the, the diode is flipped on the large scale. This is one of those LGB gap tracks, and you can see that the factory provided the gap and the terminal block, so it makes it real easy to, to wire the diode in. You just hook it up to those screw terminals. If you get it wrong, it's real easy to flip it around to the correct direction. You don't have to unsolder anything. You just flip it around and tighten the screws back up again. So. That's how the diodes look on this layout. Now here I've slowed the engine down so it doesn't cover quite as much ground and I've set the timer down to the minimum and what you see is it's not quite making it into the ends before the timer reverses the polarity. You can see that didn't make it into the end, it changed direction. Now watching it this way it won't quite make it into the uh, end of the track section where the diodes are. It'll change the direction first. There it goes. You can see it didn't make it to the diodes. It just immediately changed polarity. So you don't really, there's no real reason to want to operate it like this. You want to set the timer so there's enough of a delay between the changes in polarity that the train sits in the uh, end and waits at least a little while. I'll, I'll turn that up to a higher delay. I increased the delay and you can see it it's uh, staying one polarity long enough to make it into the end section. You can you may be able to see you have to work the speed and the time together to slow the train down then you may have to increase your delay time between polarity changes a little bit longer. You see now it's making it successfully back into the end section. And you can see we've got a reasonable delay, say about, I think that was about eight seconds or so before it starts up again. One final thing to mention about uh, putting the track power to these two pieces of track the uh, S gauge uh, terminal track is here where the wires connect up to the rails. For the large scale, the connector is down here. Now these, these connectors can go almost anywhere within this expanse of track with the only 
The only restriction being you can't put them outside the diode section. If you try to connect your power input down here outside of the diode section, you'll, you'll never get the current because of, into the main track because the diodes will stop it. So you've got to make sure you connect your main track power up in between the diode section, somewhere in the, the middle of the track. Now looking at the uh, track connection, you may be able to see I've got two wires going out to the each track section. These two are going to the S gauge track and these two are going to the large scale track. We'll come back in and look at the control unit here. Basically a DC transformer. These two gray wires are the input to this blue box uh, and in the two and they go over to the term terminals. Actually, I should say the orange wires are the input to the blue box. They come from the gray wires. The gray wires go over, connect to the terminal block, go on the orange wires into the box. So two input wires, uh, the output wires are these two black wires, which come to this terminal block and in out to the track. Again, we're looking at our control unit, which is this blue unit here. This is actually an old one. I think it's like from the around 1989 or so that I've had for a long time. It was made by PH Hobbies, a company that's no longer producing these, I don't believe. It's a pretty generic unit. It, like I mentioned, it just flips the uh, polarity. I should say reverses the polarity on a timer. What's inside here probably is a double pole, double throw relay and some kind of a timer to control it. So uh, I couldn't build one of these, but for electronics people, this circuit's pretty basic. There's, there's Today there's a bunch of units out similar to this, uh, you know, some more sophisticated with intermediate stops and uh, gauges and dials and stuff on them. Here's one of the, like, here's a Railroad Concepts uh, Station Master Reverser. This will do a similar thing. This one's more sophisticated. Uh, it, you put reed switches on the end and it adjusts for acceleration and deacceleration on each end. It'll also work with a diode, uh, I believe it does work with diode tracks like we have here but it is a more sophisticated unit. I, right now I'm just trying to demonstrate this real simple one here. So you, you only have two adjustments. This is your time delay. This is the only adjustment you make on this thing. How, how much time passes between when the polarity changes on the track. Over here is your transformer and you just speed the normal way you do on your transformer if you want to speed the train up. Now just as I uh, Another way to try to illustrate how the diodes in the track uh, trap the train at each end of the track, so to speak. I hooked up a regular uh, old-fashioned DC power pack. I think this one dates back to the 1960s. But uh, right now the train is stuck in the one end section. So what I'm going to do is go over there and manually flip the polarity on the power pack and the train should start up. Now you can see when I change the polarity on the track, even though the automatic timer is not in there, the train started up because it had the correct polarity to pull out of the diode sections. Now we're stuck in the other end. I'm going to do the same thing, go back to that power pack and manually change the polarity. And again, that train will keep running until it goes across that gap in the track where the diode is and it will stop the uh, train. There we go. Now I'll go back and switch it manually. You can think of the diodes as sort of being like a turnstile for electrons. You can think of a turnstile in a subway station or wherever you encounter a turnstile. It only lets you go one direction. Same with the diode and the current. It only lets the current go one direction. So it won't let the current go any further in that end section, but when I reverse the polarity uh, like a turnstile going in the correct direction, it will let the current go the direction it needs to go to pull that train out of that section.
if we look at the wiring diagram for this thing, here's our uh, DC transformer, our shuttle controller, and out here is the track. We're calling this forward direction. So we've got two wires from the transformer to the controller, another two wires from the controller to the track. Now, when it's in the forward position, say the plus is the pink. You've got the plus wire coming in here, which it's always going to be in here. And when this thing's in the normal position, you're going to have the plus going out this wire, which will make the train go forward. Now, when this thing changes to reverse direction, and the relay inside the controller changes, you'll now have the plus, plus wire essentially coming out on the other wire to the track. What was the negative wire to the track is now the positive, and what was the positive wire to the track is now the negative wire. So, in this position, it's reversed the polarity in the track. Now, here's the same diagram as before. I've just added two little light bulbs to the circuit. Uh, if I wire a light, two light bulbs from the what's the positive wire coming out of the transformer going through the lights, and one of them is hooked to this side of the track, and one of them is hooked to this side of the track, what happens when it's uh, when the relay is in the position shown? This light bulb on the outside that's shown yellow, it'll be connected from what's the plus wire to what is now the minus wire and that light bulb will light up. This light bulb will be connected to the plus wire on both sides, so there will be no voltage drop across it, and this bulb, bulb will not light. So one of my bulbs will light when the train is traveling in the forward direction. Now here we are looking at the same wiring diagram again with the two light bulbs, but we've shown the uh, shuttle controller as having changed the polarity going to the track. So now this light bulb here that's shown in yellow is now connected to the plus from the transformer, but it's now connected to what is the negative terminal to the track. So it'll, it'll have a voltage drop across it and it will light. The other light bulb that was lit up will now be going from the plus out of the transformer to the plus to the track. So there'll be no voltage drop across that light bulb, hence it'll stay off. So what this gives us is each direction one of those light bulbs will light up. It's just sort of a real crude indicator system of which way the a polarity is being uh, put onto the track. All right, I've got a digital voltmeter hooked across the uh, output terminals from the control unit going onto the track. You can see right now the digital voltmeter I think is positive. It's reading about a positive 9 volts. You can see the left light is lit. So it takes about 16 seconds at the uh, slowest uh, time delay. Now there it just switched. You can see the other light the right light came on and the voltage in the voltmeter is now reading negative. So that's that's what I'm calling reverse. It'll it'll try to run the train in the reverse direction for about 16 seconds. Now there it flipped again. You can see the left light came on. Now it's a plus voltage, so now it's trying to run the train forward. Again it'll try to run that train forward for about 16 seconds, then it then it'll flip it to reverse. So what this controller is doing is reversing the polarity on the track every uh, 16 seconds. That's the minimum setting. Now you can see we're, we're, we're at a negative voltage. So again, whenever a 16 seconds time goes by, it'll switch back to plus, and the other indicator light will go on. And if the train were on the track, it would change direction. Now there it switched back to plus voltage. Now it would be running the train in the forward direction. I've got the uh, August 2012 issue of Garden Railway Magazine shown here. Uh, this is a part one of a five-part series, Automation in the Garden, an excellent series by author uh, Kevin Strong. And here he's discussing the uh, what he calls out and back, which is essentially point-to-point -point operation. He gives the basics and details of several systems. In the chart over here, uh, which I'm pushing in front of the camera, let's zoom in a little if we can. He discusses uh, systems from LGB, DALI, split jaw, and uh, railroad concepts. And in addition to these four companies, uh, I believe there's other probably smaller people that build them. As I mentioned, these things aren't terribly difficult for an electronics person to, to build. This, this covers both the simple ones like I'm demonstrating in this uh, video 
and also the more complicated ones where you have maybe uh, read switches in the track or uh, uh, current sensing the devices to do station stops in the, middle, in the middle and things like that. Just keep in mind the one I've demonstrated in this video is the uh, simplest one. There's an advantage of keeping it simpler because it's easier to uh, troubleshoot it.